This project started as a prototype for the Taurus table. So I decided to finish it, because you know, why waste all that wood? But I took that as permission to just run with it and go nuts, and if I don't like the results, well, it was going to be a prototype anyway, so I didn't lose anything. The design for the cutouts and the side panels started with this picture of a lamp that I've had on my computer for ages, and I don't know where it came from. I stretched that to the size of the panel and then modified it until I was sort of happy with it. I used the CNC to make a template for tracing the design onto the panel. That really could have been done with just printing it out. But then I would modify that design to try to cut out any imperfections in the board. And then there was a whole lot of drilling and cutting. On the sides I used the scroll saw to do the cutting. And on the top and bottom I used the jigsaw and that worked a lot better. Softwood has different density in the early and late wood. And the, the small blade in the scroll saw is sort of affected by that. When you hit that harder grain it gets deflected and it's hard to keep a smooth curve. The jigsaw wasn't affected by that as much. This wasn't my intention in the beginning, but this is sort of a minimal tools project. You could do almost all of it with a circular saw, a jigsaw, and a drill. For the center section, again, I used the CNC to make a template to hold the slats in the right place. But again, you don't need to have CNC to make this template. You can either print it out or just work up the whole thing with a protractor. To locate the holes that I'm going to drill for the screws, I made a little block the same size as the slats with two holes drilled into it. So here I'm drilling on the outside face of the panel with a counterbar that I will later fill to cover up the screw holes. So then it was just a matter of connecting the pattern transferred from the sides to the cutout in the middle. And again, taking into account any imperfections in the board. The hardest part is always the first line. And then we're cutting out again. If you weren't proficient with the jigsaw at the beginning of the project, you will be at the end of it. I cut out a lot more on what's going to be the bottom panel. I didn't want to do that on the top because, you know, stuff is going to fall through. But I really liked the bottom panel a lot better than what ended up with the top. The spindle center wasn't really a whole lot of use in cleaning it up. It was all file work and then sanding. It's a lot of work. It's a little daunting, but if you stay focused, you'll get right through it in no time. Then I marked the locations for the screws that are going to join the top and bottom to the sides. And all of the joinery in this project is just screws and butt joints. If you pre-drill, you shouldn't have too much of a problem with splitting the wood. But if you say, grab a number 8 when you're supposed to have a number 6, you might split one, in which case you can use the screw to open up the crack, work in glue, take out the screw, and then if you can, get a clamp on there. And nobody will know. I made two of those templates for the center. It took some fussing, but I was able to get that top template on there. There's two screws going into each slat. There's one long one that actually holds it, and then a second one that's really short because it's a curve. That just keeps it from being able to twist. You don't need to see that whole process again on the bottom, right? Now we're back to drawing the lines for the cutouts on the top, and I have to remove the top to 
cut it out, there's a lot of taking this thing apart and putting it back together. At some point I decided that I wouldn't take the slats completely apart. I would always keep them connected to one side or the other. I thought that would save me the trouble of having to keep track of which one goes where, but doing the finishing on those with them vertical was not a good idea. I wanted to paint all the cut edges. My logic for that was that if I stain it, the stain is going to tend to highlight all the imperfections, whereas paint tends to cover things up. I ended up using a fairly dark stain across the piece, so there wasn't a whole lot of contrast there. If you went with a natural look on the faces, there'd be a lot of contrast between the two. Once all of the inside faces were finished sanded, I could put it together for the last time. Once I had it all together, there was a lot of empty space inside of there, and it sort of didn't look right. So I thought if I could float a couple of drawers in there, that would fill the space and hopefully it would look a little bit better. So there's a pocket that the drawer sits in and can slide through to either side. I marked the location of where that was going to be centered, and then I found four different spots where I could put the little support thingies, drilled through from the inside. They wouldn't stand up on their own, so I hot glued them into place, so they would stay while I was drilling into them from the outside. So that connects the supports to the outside of the table. Now I need to connect the support to the drawer box. So I trace around the supports and drill through from the outside. But before screwing those into place, I want to do all the finishing. And did I say before that I had taken it apart and put it back together from the last time? Well, I took the bottom off because I was afraid that I would scratch the drawer box getting it in there. So once the finishing was done, then I could install the drawer boxes. And to get inside of there to pre-drill and drive the screws, the drill wouldn't fit in there. But I have some short drill bits with a hex shank. And those fit in my impact, which is a lot smaller. And that just fit inside of there. After adding some feet on the bottom and door poles, it is done. Now I know the end result is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, which is fine. But what I hope you take away from this, even if you don't necessarily like the project itself, is I made this with just box star pine and pre-glued panels and pretty minimal tools. And there's no fancy joinery, so I'll just screw it together. And it doesn't have to be boring when you do that. You can have fun, you can make something really outrageous, even with basic tools and cheap lumber.